Hello, this is Mr. Reinert, and I'd like to introduce a former student of mine when I used to teach college level English in Australia. Her name is Elena. She's from Colombia, and she currently still lives in Melbourne, Australia. But let's take a look. Uh, she is a forest engineer and has a lot to tell us about the environment of Colombia, the, uh, the rainforest there in South America, as well as Colombian culture and her experiences. So our objectives, Today, I will learn about Colombian geography and culture so I can understand how different Colombia and Northern South America is from other parts of South America. I will know I have it when I can say three things that make Colombia unique or three things that I learned about Colombia today. She has put a lot of work into this, so please listen carefully and give her your full attention. Hello from Melbourne. I'd like to give you an introduction about Colombia from my point of view. I am Elena Giraldo, a forest engineer from my city, Medellin, Colombia. Uh, fortunately, I have had the opportunity to travel a lot uh, within my country particularly because of my career. There are some regions I still dream about visiting. But anyway, I'll give you first uh, some generalities. Colombia is located in the north of South America. The northernmost point of South America is called Punta Gallinas, uh, which means like Cape Hen. Uh, it is a very arid area. Uh, it is a desert with spinels and turnip plants, uh, dunes and everything. <laughs> uh, going there, it was like a goal fulfilled for me. Uh, it didn't disappoint. It has magnificent views. Well, Punta Gallinas is located at 12.5 degrees north. And Leticia, which is the Colombia's southernmost town, it's at, at 4.1 degrees south. What I want to show you here is that Colombia is crossed by the equator line. Then its climate is it's mostly torrid all year long, and the variation in sunlight is very narrow during the year. However, we've got the Andes. La Cordillera de los Andes is the longest continental mountain range in the world, forming a continuous high line along the western edge of South America. It branches out in three at the south of Colombia. So not only our climate, but also our culture have significant variation across the country. Altitudes in Colombia ranges from zero to 18,800 feet in the uh, Christopher Columbus Peak. Pico Cristobal Colón, which is the fifth in the world. We also have many nevados, uh, which are high peaks or volcanoes with permanent snow. But unfortunately, the snow is melting due to climate change. So if you prefer one climate or the other, you have to move out to another city. For example, Medellin, my city, has a mean temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It is called the city of the eternal spring. Uh, we have a festival with flowers and everything. <laughs> uh, Cali is 77 Fahrenheit degrees. Bogota, which is the capital, is uh, 58. Tunja, the highest city of Colombia, is 55. Santa Marta, the hottest, is 82.9 degrees. Uh, so you can see the huge difference and that 
average temperature doesn't change much uh, across the year. Only uh, the major change of temperature happens during the day from early morning to the afternoon. I lived in Santa Marta for a couple of years. That's the oldest still inhabited city founded by Spaniards in Colombia and second in South America. It has fantastic beaches next to a wild environment with dry forests and temperate mountains still in inhabited by indigenous communities. Highly recommend it. As you might have imagined already, Colombia is such a big country. Well, it's the 25th in the world. All of those diverse geographic characteristics have triggered quite a lot of different environments for people and species, which means high diversity. Actually, Colombia has the second highest level of biodiversity in the world after Brazil. Colombia holds the first position in birds. It has 1,941 species of birds. First place in butterflies and moths with 3,274 species and orchids, which is the national flower actually with 4,270 species. That's why Colombia is so popular for bird watching and has also won for several years in a row the Global Big Day, which is a day where people um, from around the world go bird watching in their own countries and record as many species as, as possible. Colombia has rainforest, highlands, grasslands, uh, deserts, mangroves, wetlands, and paramos. Paramos is a kind of alpine tundra ecosystem, very important for our water supply. I have worked in Andean forests and mangroves, uh, which are, which is, uh, you might know them, they are uh, in the Florida, uh, there are trees with big roots next to the sea and uh, also it is important to mention that it's the only country in South America that is bounded by the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific, uh, Pacific Ocean with islands and everything. All of this can be classified in Colombia's six natural regions, the Andean, the Pacific, the Caribbean, the Llanos or plains, flatlands, and the, the Amazon and the insular region. I have been in all the mentioned landscapes and regions except for Llanos Orientales. Eastern plains, grasslands, is a region shared with Venezuela. The Andes Mountains range makes it possible to experience a, a wide variety of climate, which configure a high diversity of ecosystems, landscape, culture, agricultural crops, and last but not least, species. That's why it is a biodiversity hotspot. The Pacific region is as well a biodiversity hotspot. Its precipitation is among the highest in the world, with an average of 160 inch per year, and some, and some areas that receive more than 470 inches per year. Furthermore, being one of the most biodiverse countries in the world, Colombia has the widest varieties of ingredients to cook, depending on the region. Colombia is home to numerous tropical fruits uh, that are rarely found elsewhere. Several varieties of banana include very small, sweet version, we call it murrapo. Other Colombian native fruits include lulo, uchuba, 
papayuela is like a little papaya uh, passion fruit borojo mamoncillo guanabana sour soap guava tomate de árbol or tomato tree among others there are plenty um, the primary agricultural products of Colombia are coffee and it's the fourth language largest producer of coffee in the world Uh, cut flowers, bananas, rice, tobacco, corn, sugar cane, cocoa beans, oil seed, vegetables, fique, panela, forest products, and shrimp. Panela is a very important ingredient of our cuisine. It's a sugar cane derived product which is used mostly to create beverages to have with meals. We sometimes use it to sweeten uh, the coffee or tinto, as we call a long black. Corn, beans, rice, plantain, cassava, potato, avocado, coconut, guava, banana, beef, and cheese are the main ingredients of Colombian cuisine. Dishes come from indigenous, Spanish, and African traditions, and they vary significantly across the regions. That's why there are so many dishes that I have never tried. Today, I am only talking about one dish. One dish, the bandeja paisa or paisa platter, which is from the region I am from and it's claimed to be the national dish. It's quite a huge dish. With too many items, we normally don't eat that much. <laughs> However, its importance relies on the fact that each part of it represents a lot of what we eat. So I am going to list each part. First, the main part is frijoles, which is a red bean soup cooked with pork. It is something people from the Paisa, my region, and then we are in the Andes region, might eat on an everyday basis. Going with lunch and sometimes breakfast. In my family, we used to meet every Wednesday for eating beans at my grandparents' home. Most of Latin Americans, like us, mix always the beans with white rice. Patacones is a refried, flattened chunk of fried green plantain. Plantain is a kind of banana we used to cook, um, but let me rephrase it. It is kind of green banana fried chunks then squished and then fried again. It's probably the best Colombian appetizer. Very popular across the country and hugely important in the coastal cuisine. It has a bit of salt over it and it can be topped with ogao or guacamole. You might not guacamole, but ogao is a Colombian sauce made basically with tomato and scallions. Uh, green leaves of onion and we use it to mix it with beans or, or to top uh, patacones or arepas. Arepas are one of the oldest cooked dishes in Colombian cuisine. It has an indigenous origin and it's made from ground corn and it's like a thicker corn to tortilla. <laughs> They can be a side or a main dish. They normally accompany every Colombian breakfast. Next, tajadas or slices of fried ripe plantain. Remember, plantain is like banana but different. <laughs> so this is sweet because it's ripe. Uh, another uh, way to uh, to eat the Ripe plantain is with the whole plantain roasted or grilled with cheese. We love the mix of something sweet 
with cheese. Uh, you can find those plantains across the road. I normally ask the driver to stop, if possible, every time I see grilled plantains on the road. Uh, another ingredient are fried egg with soft yolk, avocado, ground meat, chicharron. Chicharron is a deep fried pig skin with meat attached. Chorizo, which is a coarse meat sausage. Also, it's eaten separately with arepas. Very popular. Morcilla or black pudding. Agua panela. Do you remember panela? Then this is water panela. It's the preferred drink to accompany lunches. It's served cold and with squeezed lemon. Mazamorra. It's a side dish to eat after lunch. It's like a plain soup of corn with milk, but you eat it with chunks of panela or bocadillo. Bocadillo is a traditional and most important Colombian dessert. It's basically a guava paste. Finally, I'd like to speak about people. Colombia is considered one of the most ethnically and linguistically diverse countries in the world. Colombians are descending from the original native inhabitants, Spanish colonists, Africans, which were originally brought out to the country as slaves, and the 20th century immigrants from Europe and the Middle East all contributing to a diverse cultural heritage. Spanish is the main language, but English and other 68 regional languages are also recognized. English is the official language in the Caribbean islands, where a Creole English is also widely spoken. Given that they were colonized initially by English conquerors. The Raisan or traditional people of the islands are Afro-descendant. I lived in San Andres Island and I can tell that they are surprisingly different from the inland Afro-descendant people. I have worked for an Embera indigenous community designing a sustainable timber harvesting plant. And there I had the fortune to share a lot with them and learn some words. Apart from them, I had contact with Kunas, Wajus, Kogis, and Arwako peoples. All of them speak a totally different language. I wanted to show you some of the art they make. This is Waju. Those are people from, you remember Punta Gallinas? And these are Arwako people that it's from Santa Marta and the mountains near Santa Marta. In total, there are uh, 102 indigenous groups that still exist in Colombia. And that's it. Uh, email me if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. That was my friend, Elena, who told us about Colombia. And if you have any questions, please ask me and I can forward them to her. Um, obviously, if I'm not your teacher, you can ask your teacher and then they can write them down and I can uh, get back to you about that. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.